Malazan, Book of the Fallen, Memories of Ice. I am 85 pages in and thought I'd just start off with a, it's good to be back and so far so good. Um, not really much to report on as yet, we're just sort of warming up, we're getting into the story, we're meeting some new characters. Um, in the prologue, we're having a little bit of a flashback historical moment where we're going back and we're seeing some things that have happened prior to Garden of the Moon. And we've met characters such as Pran Cole, uh, Canning Toll, who are both from Tilanimas clan. There's also a Jag Hurt mum and her two children. We've got Kalava, who is Tilanimas and actually the sister of Tool. Um, and we're also learning about the come about of the end of the 33rd Jag Hurt War. So that's quite interesting how that came about. Um, then we also get to meet some elder gods, who is Krull, Draconis, and Sister of Cold Night. And they have all eventually come together. They've not been together for some time. They've all come together to eradicate the new, or as is for 50, the last 50 years, the high king of Jakuruku, which is a hard one for me, Jakuruku, um, Kalor. Kalor has been reigning here for 50 years and has enslaved 12 million people. And the Elder Gods know about this and they want to come and potentially free the 12 million people. So we're going into that history side of things. This is prior to the fourth... Um, well, it's the it's the Panion War. It's it's prior to the Panion War. Um, we've also learnt that it was a mage circle who called upon the gods to send a god to help them beat Kalor. Um, but they made a mistake and they called an alien god, and this god fell to them. But it as it fell, it was ripped to pieces, and in falling, it also killed the mage circle who called upon it so that plan didn't work that wasn't successful to get rid of Kalor and when the elder gods meet with Kalor and find out exactly what it is that he's done curses are exchanged um, curses to Kalor and Kalor exchanges curses back to the elder gods which take effect pretty quickly to be honest um, I'm quite surprised at how efficient Kalor is with his curses they do seem, seem to take effect quite quick then we go on to book one of the um, Spark of Ashes. And as I say, it's the fourth year of the Panion War. So we meet Captain Gruntle and his um, comrades Harlow and Stoner. And these are all caravan guards. So we've got this caravan of merchants and other people. And these are guards to their master called Kenile. Uh, he's a merchant and they are guarding Kenile in this um, procession of a caravan. There are two other masters who send a manservant to Gruntle because they want to speak to him and they want his services. And the manservant is called Emancipa Rees. And he goes to Gruntle and says, my masters wish to speak to you. Gruntle's not overly keen on the idea, but his master has had a... Had, had, his master has had a part to play in this. So he goes and has the conversation. And they're very much intrigued by the hole that's been left by the Telanimas freeing the Jag Hurt Tyrant. They're very, very intrigued in this. And the moon spawn as well. They can see the moon spawn. And they're asking these kind of questions. And they want to know if Gruntle will come with them and work with them as well. Um, so there's that whole story going on. Then we have a little snippet of a mortal god, or what the mortals reflect as as a god, which is the white wolf. And this white wolf has is, has only one eye. It's, it's been through some some wars, and it comes across Tok the Younger. 
so we get back thankfully <laughs> to a gardens of the moon character because i do love gardens of the moon it's got some of my favorite characters in there so we get back to talk the younger and something happens between the white wolf and talk the younger and it's to do with some spiral concerning the white wolf and as it looks as talk the younger's as it looks at talk the younger's face it sees something so it performs some sort of magic and talk the younger then wakes but the white wolf isn't there when Talk the Younger wakes up. And as he wakes up, he doesn't know where he is. He doesn't know how long he's been there. And he gets up, has a mooch round, stumbles across a body. Covered in dust, which, you know, again relates to him just how long they've actually potentially been there. And eventually it turns out that this body is Tool, the um, brother of uh, Kilava. So these two have a conversation, they're trying to suss out how long they've been there and Tool kind of reassures Tok how long they've been there for and says that they need to potentially head back to Malazan Empire. But along the way they go through Morn, this place called Morn, and whilst venturing through Morn they come across a girl or a woman, a young lady, or at least that's how she's perceived, called Lady Ember. And through conversation and through Tool, because of who he is, we find out that Lady Ember is actually the daughter of one of the Elder Gods, called Draconis. Which I find very interesting. Obviously, this is going to lead somewhere, um, and I'm quite intrigued to find out where this is going to lead to. Potentially, it's to do with the sword that Draconis was um, creating before he got called into having to get rid of Kalor. Um I know where this sword is. I know who's got it. Uh, just one second. That's my doggo being very demanding because she wants to clearly go out. So she'll just have just have to wait a second. She has to wait a second. <laughs> this is what happens when you vlog. Your doggo wants you. Um, so that's where we're up to at the moment. We are in chapter two, but I'm not going to cover too much of that just yet. One thing I will say about chapter two is, again, new characters. We've got um, Corporal Picker and Blend who we find out are part of the bridge burners, which is brilliant. I love the bridge burners. So therefore, being part of the bridge burners, it leads us to Quick Ben. And Quick Ben is brought back into this chapter. Fantastic. I adore Quick Ben. So we're getting there, slowly but surely. We're going to get there. We're going to get back to some of the characters from Gardens of the Moon, who I love and adore. And I'm very excited about this. So there isn't much to report back yet. Just that we've had a little glimpse into history. As to what the Elder Gods did. In regards to this person who thought he was a king. And had thought he was some sort of amazing untouchable specimen. Um, this Kalor. Who by all rights is an absolute douche. Uh, for what he's done. Um, but I presume that the further along in the story that we go those two are going to tie together and it's going to make sense further along so just for now that's where we're up to and i'll update further on so quick update i am into chapter three at page 109 we have found some of our old garden of the moon characters i could not be happier so we've got quick ben quick ben has been through an episode here my goodness um I don't know if I want to say this. I don't really want to do spoilers, but yeah, he's found someone and they've ended up having a quite a bit of an epic short battle and Quick Ben seems to potentially maybe have come off the worst for it, but in coming off the worst for it, has found yet another secret. So he's now got a side mission that he's determined to fulfil, um, which seems really interesting. And... Then we found Whiskey Jack again. Um, in this third chapter, we go back to um, Whiskey Jack. And we've also got Mallet, who's the healer. And we've got Parrin. Parrin's back. Uh, Ganos Parrin. There's things going on with Parrin as well. Um, it seems like he's ill. Um, Mallet and Whiskey Jack are conversing over what could potentially be wrong with Parrin. But... It's seeming like it's maybe otherworldly, like it's not quite just an ailment or something like cancer or something, you know, that could be medically treated. It's seeming like 
Well, it's seeming like through, through the conversation, we need Quick Ben. Uh, Parent needs the help and aid of the mage Quick Ben. So that's all going on. And now I'm reading about, I'm going to say her name is Maib, the, the Rehive. Um, I don't know if I'm say, saying that correctly, but I'm going to say her name is Maib or Mahaib or Maibi. It's one of those, but I'm saying it as Maib. Again, don't really want to do spoilers, but I have questions. Firstly, my question is, it's not, no, it's actually not a question. It's a thought. Is Silver Fox who I think she is? Because if it's who I think she is, then my excitement meter has just gone up about 10. Literally raised to 10. So that's if that is who I think it is. And I really think that's who it is. Um, because we're talking about having a parlay um, because of this um, Panion, Panion War. And we're talking about a parlay between certain groups of people and Mahib and Silver Fox and Kala, who's another new character, she is Tistani. They are going along to this parley. I think they've been asked to be there. Um, so they're going along to this parley. But as they're going to this parley, Silver Fox is doing an awful lot of talking. And then four potential soldiers, warriors show up and there's a conversation between Silver Fox and Mahib and Kala to say, who are they? And you can tell straight away that one of them is Dujek, uh, one arm. And then Silver Fox is sensing who the others are because she has these abilities. Um, and I'm getting very, very excited by what's happening right now. It's seeming like Silver Fox is more than just some girl. There's hints along this narrative to say potentially that she could be who I think she is. So I'm, I am going along those lines. That's exactly who I think she is. And there's one particular one out of the four who something's been said, who it leads me to believe even more so that it's this particular character. Because there's like this certainty um, of this particular man but there's one who she's very uncertain of um I'm, i've not got as far as to finding out who that is yet but i need to just jump on and give those thoughts um, and i apologize if you can hear me neighbors they're having work done it's quite frustrating there's a lot of drilling and knocking going on but what can you do um these walls are quite thin so but yeah this is all what's going on now so we're in chapter chapter three we're moving along and the story is getting more intense and I'm loving it. We're going back to the Garden of Moon, Garden, Gardens of the Moon characters. And I do think we're going to find out that Silver Fox is actually somebody else. So we'll see. We've read on a bit further. And my suspicions were correct. They've been confirmed. I'm such a happy girl that not only is my favourite character, kind of back, but also the character who has this immensely cool name is back. I'm trying not to do spoilers. I'm trying not to, you know, I want to say my thoughts, but I don't want to spoil for those that haven't already read Memories of Ice. I know there's a lot of you that will have, but for those that haven't, I don't want to spoil. So I'm now at the point after, or kind of when it's about to wrap up, the parlay to discuss what we're going to do about Panion de Domin and Kalar, the, the High King. I don't really want to call him that because he's not a very nice person. But Kalar is at this, this, this parlay and has opened his big mouth and basically told everybody the secrets. Um, so everybody now knows and it's had to have been, it's had to be explained. Um, so now we know the truth about Silver Fox. But on top of that, we have the sacrifice that's being made in order for Silver Fox to actually survive. Um, but I also have another theory. At the beginning of this book, it starts off with the Elder Gods. And there's three of them. There's Krull, 
there's, um, I forgot his name already, Docunus. Uh, let me check my notes, I'm sure it's Docunus. Bear with me a sec. Yeah, oh no, Dracon Draconus. Draconus, I, I, I was there, thereabouts. So we've got Corull, Draconus, and Sister of Cold Nights. Am I getting this wrong? Is there a connection between Crone? Because Crone's back, the, the raven. That, it, that, that character's back. Is there a connection here that I'm spotting? Or am I just making this up? Maybe I'm making it up. Maybe I'm seeing things that aren't there. But I'm thinking there's potentially a connection there. There was mention of... I'm trying to do this without spoiling. There was mention of the sister of Cold Night spending time in the mortal world that she walks amongst the mortals so there's some conversation about crone and how silver fox may have in some way exposed crone am i getting too far beyond the realms of am i just you know am i being silly i think that maybe there's a connection to be had there. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's why I've stopped. I'm at page 129. I've stopped to, to say this, because I want to share that with, that's where my thought, this is about my thoughts as I'm reading Memories of Ice and however far I get in Malazan this month. So everything's about sharing my thoughts. My thoughts are such as this. Am I making this up or is, the connection, is there a connection? For those of you that know, is there a connection between, I will find out because I'm going to carry on reading, but I'm just, this is where I'm at at this moment. I think there's a connection between Crone and Sister of the Cold Night. That's where I'm thinking. Could be wrong, so we'll see. But that's where I'm at right now. Just wanted to share that, that's all. Okay. Okay. Excuse my stupidity. It has literally just been explained to me. Cryptically. But I think I've got it. So, it has nothing to do with Crone, the raven, as to who Sister of Cold Night is. It's there in the name, D. How idiotic can I be sometimes? It's literally there in the name. So, there is a connection between what inhabits Silver Fox, who inhabits Silver Fox, and the Elder God. Right, now I'm with it. I just wanted to clarify that to let everybody know that sometimes, yes, I am as idiotic as I appear and I jump to conclusions. I think more into things than is necessary. So, yes, I now realise who is the sister of Cold Night. I get it. Mike, I forgot again. <laughs> I'm not used to filming down here. So it's, what time is it? Quarter to five in the PM. Um, I've been reading since I think around half seven, eight o'clock this morning. So I think I'm going to call it a day. Um, I'm up to a page 150 of Memories of Ice, which is quite disappointing really. I'm usually further ahead than that. But with it being Malazan, I'm taking my time, taking it in. I'm making consistent notes, excuse my phone, I've not turned it on silent, uh, making consistent notes. In the meantime, I've been doing housework and so on. Um, but yeah, I'm thoroughly enjoying Memories of Ice. It's great. Yeah, um, so we've found a few things out which have been extremely interesting. We've found out some things about Sister of Cold Night. We've found out some things about Silver Fox. We've also found out the plans that Whiskey Jack and the High Fist and some of the other guys have planned for trying to beat the Panion Domin, um, or Domion. And I found that all extremely interesting and enticing. I'd, again, I've found that this book has gone back to the context of Gardens of the Moon, meaning that 
I struggled a little bit with Dead House Gates. It didn't have the same flow for me as Gardens of the, of the Moon had. Whereas Memories of Ice has gone back to the same sort of flow as Gardens of the Moon. But what I am doing, like I said, is I'm taking my time. I'm not rushing. I'm making notes. Potentially at certain points I'm rereading just to see if I'm actually taking in what is potentially and properly being said. And Stephen Erickson, he doesn't falter again. It's such a great start off to his third in the series. Um, but I'm very enthralled. I'm, I'm, I'm brought in, I'm enticed. I want to know more. I'm at the point where we're back with the new characters, um, such as Gruntle, um, Hallow, uh, St- Stoney, I think it is. Uh, we're back with those, with the kind of caravan and their caravan guards and they're with their masters and we're back there with them. And we're, there's just a bit of a laugh and a joke going on at the moment. So I probably will continue reading later this evening. That's generally what I do or I read in bed for an hour or so just before I go to sleep. So I probably will have more to say tomorrow. But as for today, video wise, vlogging wise, I'm going to leave it there because we started the vlog. First vlog was at 12, I think, 12, 12-ish. I started the first vlog and intermittently I've been blogging in between. So this is just day one. It's May 1st, day one. And we've still got a hell of a way to go. This is the 1st of May. We've got, is it 30 days, 31 days in May? We've got 31 days to go. So, and I may well vlog every day. This is why I said you might see a lot more of me. And you might be bored of me by the end of May. You might be like, oh my goodness, I'm unsubscribing to that channel. I'm sick to death of seeing that woman. Um, <laughs> well, then again, you might be like, wow, you know, so nice to see so much of her. Don't know if I could keep this up, I'll be honest with you. Um, but... The fibro and what have you, it, it catches up with me eventually and it makes me feel tired. And I'm feeling quite tired now because I've been reading quite a while. So I'm going to sign off. I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you if you've watched this vlog. I will probably vlog again tomorrow. But I really appreciate your support and I really appreciate it if you like, subscribe, do all those things. It means everything. And let's just create a conversation as far as Malazan goes. We've got Gardens of the Moon, we've got Dead House Gates, and we can divulge somewhat into Memories of Ice now. So if there's anything you want to say, as long as it's not too spoilery, eh, um, please do in the comments, please join in on the chat. Let me know what you thought to Memories of Ice. Let me know what you thought to Gardens of the Moon of Dead House Gates. Um, I do have quite a few people who I've made good friends with who are huge Malazan fans. Otto being one, the team being another. They're both on my Discord. Otto actually... Um, helps me with the discord um but yeah let's let's just talk let's communicate I, I love that i love the comments back and forth if there's anything at all that you want to comment on please do P- please feel free and i will absolutely respond i always do but that's me signing off this is a different take on things and i hope you enjoy it this vlog style i hope it's been nice and a bit different i'll see you all again tomorrow bye bye <laughs>